So this guy says stats majors should go into quant finance. I don't think stats majors need to go into anything. Sure, if you find that fulfilling and quant finance is your thing or finance is your thing, quant finance is probably a high paying career. You're probably going to have to work a lot of hours, but it's definitely fulfilling for a type of person. However, you can go into data analysis, you can go into data science, you can go back to school and get your grad degree, go more of like a science or research route. You can do so many things with statistics and to corner yourself into one particular area that you can go into with statistics, I think is just wrong. If that's what you want to do, go for it. All right, here's the next question. Would hedge fund managers fall under a statistics major? You can see my short answer below with correct economics or finance background. It's not impossible. And I think to go into it like a hedge fund manager, I don't know exactly what a hedge fund manager does per se, but I'm sure you would need a lot more finance and investing knowledge than you would get in any sort of statistics degree. Even an economics degree or finance degree, I think you would have to do some kind of specialized internship in order to get experience in that realm before you actually become a hedge fund manager. But if you get a statistics major, it's not to say that you can't become a hedge fund manager. I think with a statistics major, you can become just about anything you want. I'm um, sure you can't become a doctor or a lawyer without those particular specialties, but um, you can get into a lot of things with statistics. All right, now this one's a little bit more of a pet peeve. I get this kind of question or comment a lot on the YouTube channel. They're saying, I'm doing an applied statistics major and data analytics. I'm in my second year. I want to start my own research and build a startup. Please suggest me methods or ways, comma, ideas. So basically what you're saying is you want to do all these things and you want me to lay out the path for you. Um, sure, this, this YouTube channel is here to help people who are statistics majors and it's here to help people who want to become data analysts, kind of moving them along those journeys and just giving them pieces of advice that I picked up along the way and kind of talking about my own journey and how you can apply that to yourself. Sure, that's, that's kind of the help that I'm here for. Uh, but unless you're giving me some equity in your company, I'm not giving you ideas or laying out any groundwork for you to build a startup. I'm sorry. But as far as research goes, I guess I can give a piece of advice there. Um, find something you're interested in. Find a good quality source of data for that topic. Usually that's going to come from something like a government website or there's sites like Kaggle where you can get, get kind of like test data. It's probably not all, always quality data, but it is data that you can work with. And then or you can get something from a, more, a quality source like Our World and Data. Um, I'm sure there's some other sources that I just can't think of off the top of my head. But one place I would definitely check out is Our World and Data. They have a lot of cool data sets and visualizations around interesting topics. So just definitely check out their website. I'll link that down below. All right, now here's one that not a lot of people think about. Not a lot of people actually comment about on my channel, which is kind of surprising. Maybe it's just because I don't talk about it much. But this person says, this is dope. Stats has been a big thing in the NFL. They're hiring a lot more data analysts to give them the highest percentage to win a game. When to go for it on fourth down. That's a football reference for all you people not outside of the United States. Um, when it's most effective to pass, to run, ETC, it's pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy. And I want to also just point out that like these teams aren't just hiring data analysts. They're not just taking data from a game and saying, okay, here's what led to the most yardage or whatever, you know, whatever con insert context of specific sport. Um, they're also using things like predictive analytics. They're using like machine learning and AI, and they're really getting advanced with this stuff to try to give themselves the highest percentage to win. I watched this documentary of data scientists that work for the NBA um, and they help basketball teams kind of predict what is going to give them the best chance at winning. It gives them an idea of like how many threes they should be shooting a game, how many times they should be trying to drive to the hole, who they should be running their offense through, um, what defenders they should be trying to avoid, that kind of thing. And I think it's just absolutely crazy. There's a huge world of analytics and data science and machine learning that goes into sports that a lot, not a lot of people know about. So that's definitely something I can talk more about if you guys are interested. So be sure to drop that down in the comments if you are. So this is also a super inter interesting question. I kind of haven't got this one in a while, but I do want to touch on it again. Which programming language is most important, R, Python, or SQL? Um, which one should I start learning first? And luckily, somebody answered below before I was able to. If you're, They said, if you're looking to become a data analyst or a related job, definitely learn SQL. It's a hard requirement for most analytics jobs because it is the language that will typically give you access to the data. Um, so first of all, I don't, necessarily agree with that um, i don't i wouldn't say it's a hard requirement for most analytics jobs at least from my experience because i got a job without knowing any sequel beforehand 
Um, it depends on where you're at in your journey of learning data analytics. I think if you're just beginning, I think you should be starting with something like Excel before you even try to learn a language. But if you kind of have an idea about like analytics and Excel, you want to get a little bit more advanced and a little bit more customizable, um, then it depends on kind of what route you want to go and what, what you're trying to get out of learning the language. Um, if it's more so you're in school and you're trying to learn something that's going to help you kind of be more marketable in a job, I'd recommend R or Python. However, if you kind of already um, know the job that you have lined up and you know that they use a lot of SQL, it says in the job job description, they're not really interested in um, more advanced programming languages like R or Python, then I think SQL makes more sense to learn. And if you learn SQL, you kind of get an idea for like aggregating data and getting summary metrics from the data. And it'll help you learn R or Python a little bit in that sense. Um, but I think vice versa goes as well because I was very comfortable using, you know, things like group buys and filters and where clauses, aggregating data, getting summary metrics, making new fields in data. I knew all how to do all that in R and I think when I was learning SQL that helped a lot. So hopefully that kind of answers the question and kind of gives you an idea of when you should be learning these different things. But the answer is, as for most things, it depends. Oh, hey, and real quick, before I go into a few more questions, check out the two links in the description. One is to my Discord. There we chat about statistics and data analytics all the time. So join, introduce yourself, and it would be great to have you. And the second one is for my newsletter. I don't spam. I don't send a lot of emails. But when I do send something, I think it's very valuable. And this person left a long but thoughtful comment. They're currently a freshman statistics major with an intended minor in computer science. So statistics major, computer science minor. Not going to list the name of a school, but I go to a top 50 school. Um, humble brag, but all right. Probably the third best school in New York City. Also a humble brag. Fair enough. Go ahead. Go off. But I also have a data an analysis internship this summer, but it's not the typical programming type of role you'd think of. Well, not all data analyst roles are programming, but um, let's continue. It's more of a data analysis using Excel. Not the best, but not the worst type of internship for a freshman like me, I guess. Do you think that a data science internship is attainable for undergrad stats majors? And would I be in a good position to land such a role if I get future programming internships, grind extracurriculars, and maintain a 3.7 plus GPA? Um, so if you saw the beginning of my comment, they are doing much better than I was in their position as a freshman um, in school. When I was a freshman, I was in a nursing major. I wasn't even close or even thinking about data analytics. Um, so it sounds like they know what they want and they're trying their best to get there. And I think they are going to be absolutely fine. Do I think you need to get all these internships while you're in school to get a, get a job when you're done? No, but an internship is definitely very helpful to get you a job. And they're already on the right path by having an internship as a freshman where they're using data analysis in Excel. That is the type of thing that you put on your resume and it sparks some interest when you're trying to get your next job or your next internship. If they're able to nail another internship where they're actually using data science or data analytics, that just further solidifies them as saying, okay, I've done valuable work for these companies. I think it's just important on your resume that you highlight the value, valuable work you did and what kind of benefit you actually provided the company. And the second part of their question when they're talking about like extracurriculars and their GPA, I personally don't think that matters nearly as much as the other things. Depending on what type of extracurriculars, I did a data fest for Penn State. That was fun. We did data analysis. We had two or three days to complete an entire analysis. It was very fun. It was very helpful. And it kind of gave me an idea of where I was lacking because I got to see all these other teams and the cool analysis and uh, models that they fit. And I realized where I was kind of lacking in that area. But if you're just going to put on your resume that you were the captain of the Super Smash Bros Club, um, sure, it shows that you're engaged and you have you know other interests than just school but it's not really getting you anywhere. But I think building those internship connections, building networks of people that um, are in similar areas and that you can pull from and you can help, that is the type of thing that's important when you're in college and it sounds like you're on the right path. So good luck. I think you're going to do great. And thanks for watching, everybody.